Dirk, you're wrong, and we both know it. I don't care what you say. Dr. Lawler did not kill Alona Fedorov. I know how he felt about her. While you're sure that you found the man you were looking for, the murderer, the real murderer, is sitting back and laughing at you. Passage of the Tangmar. The story of a ship and its cargo of death. You might just as well have arrested Mr. Tuker or my father. Neither of them have alibis for the time of Alona's death. For that matter, neither do I. Why did it have to be Dr. Lawler, Dirk? Why arrest him and make Alona's death even harder for him to bear? It was the morning after I'd received Colonel Hacking's message from London saying that no one on the Tangmar had any relationship with Peter Slaven. I'd come off watch at midday, and as I left the bridge, I found Sharon Challoner waiting for me. Her certainty that Dr. Lawler was innocent only strengthened my own doubts. But she wasn't aware that if I hadn't placed Dr. Lawler under arrest, he would have been a lot worse off than he was now. Panama was not more than a few days sailing away, providing the Tangmar kept her schedule. And after Panama, Jamaica and Savannah Lamar and the Ferryman Fortune for the survivors of the voyage. Sharon Challoner had changed a lot. And in the warm sunlight, she looked anything but the shy, withdrawn girl who'd come aboard with her father in Sydney. Well, haven't you anything to say, Dirk? Are you going to sit back and let an innocent man be charged? Because you want this case to be closed? Oh, I want it to be closed, all right. I can't wait to be clear of the Tangmar, to be back in London living in some kind of sanity. And to do that, you'd let Dr. Lawler go to the wall? Sharon, let's get one thing straight between us. Quite apart from the evidence against him, I had a very good reason for arresting Dr. Lawler. You mean you think he's innocent? As it happens, I do. And if you must know, Dr. Lawler is risking his life to help me. It's my belief that the real murderer won't want him to reach Jamaica alive. Well, he's down there in his cabin, knowing that any moment our killer might make a move against him. So that's the reason for the guards in his door? Not completely. That was Captain Goddard's idea. But why should the murderer want him out of the way? With the evidence you've got against the doctor, I should have thought a trial would be simply a formality. The murderer wouldn't think that because he knows his own guilt. But with Dr. Lawler out of the way, enough of the mud might stick to him to establish his guilt. He wouldn't be able to prove his innocence. And Martin knows the danger he's in? Yes. Oh, if only my hunch about Slavin had paid off. I was sure that Hacking would give me the information I wanted. And instead of that, nothing. No connection between Slavin and anyone aboard. Somehow Alona's death seems so much worse than the others. She and Martin had found something in each other that was... Well, I know I'd like to have found what they had. Uh, how are things with your father now? <laughs> An armed neutrality. I think he hopes that by drinking too much, he'll make me feel as though I'm to blame. Make me agree to stay with him. Sharon, when all this is over, when I do get back to London, I... I'd like to see you again. Please don't say that if you just feel sorry for me. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not nearly the stiff upper lip character I tried to pretend to be, you know, but in my line of country, uh, my work for Interpol, it's always been better to go it alone. If you know what I mean. Why? Well, Colonel Hacking frowns a little on married agents. Uh, well, not not that I was... Well, well you see, he, he's a dyed-in-the-wool bachelor and feels that... <clears throat> I, I'd better be getting along, Sharon. I, I want to have a word with Dr. Laura and make sure that everything's all right. I'm glad you feel the same way about it. I'm going to find your murderer for you, Dirk. I'm going to find him before anything happens to you. Oh, 
sorry, Mr. Kendall, sir. Captain's orders. No one allowed in to see the doctor without he gives the order. Either get that door open, Watson, or I'll break it open. Oh, but we're only doing what the captain wants. Get out of my way, both of you. But, Mr. Uh, Kendall, sir, I... Oh, here's Captain Gotta now. Uh, I sir, we... see, Watson. Skipper, what's the idea? Dr. Lawler is my prisoner, and I'm entitled to see him whenever I wish. Providing I know about it first, yes. All you've got to do is come and ask me, Kendall. But why? I just want to make sure that no one gets it into their head to let Dr. Lawler out of there. What do you think the doctor... You don't think he's guilty, I know that. Well, I do. I'm making sure that Dr. Lawler is around to answer charges when we reach port. Oh, but for Pete's sake. All right, you can open it up, Watson. Yes, sir. We've got quite a way to go yet, Dirk. There's not going to be any more trouble on my ship. When did you decide to take this action? Last night, when you got that message from Colonel Hacking. As far as I was concerned, that was Lawler's last chance to prove his innocence. He's guilty and you know it. And for two pins, I'd have him in the brig with Jones. Well, there we are, sir. Uh, are you coming in, Skipper? No, thanks. The less I see of that murdering swine between here and Jamaica, the better I like it. Remember what I said, Watson? Yes, sir. Whew. The old man sure is in a foul temper. I'll yell when I want to come out. All right. Lock it up. You hear that, Martin? I heard. Cigarette? No, thanks. I don't suppose you found out anything, have you? Nothing that would help. Hmm. I'd pin my faith on that message from Colonel Hacking. Now it only makes it look as though I was trying to drag a red herring across the trail, inventing a motive that would implicate somebody else. I know. Had any visitors? For five days I've been locked in this cabin. If it wasn't for you, I might as well be dead. Five days, Kendall, while my mind races along the one line. Who killed her and why? Why a loner? Who used my key to get that scalpel? Anyway, it doesn't matter anymore made up my mind that I'd hang for a crime I didn't commit, and I... Well, I don't even care. Did you say something about the visitors? Yes. Oh, yes. Sharon Challoner came to the door. I heard her arguing with the guards outside, and they wouldn't let her in. Oh, and Mr. Cregan, the chief engineer. Cregan? What did he want? <laughs> he just sang out through the door said he was going to make sure that nothing happened to the engines between here and Jamaica. Why, that old... Uh, anything else? Yes, he said that you were trying to prove that Peter Slavin's death had nothing to do with the passengers, but that he and Captain Goddard knew differently. It was Cregan who brought me the message from the wireless operator, the message from Hacking. I think maybe I'll show Cregan Colonel Hacking's message about Slavin, the first one telling me that he'd caught Slavin's killer. What good will that do? It might stop the old buzzard pestering you. He probably thinks you faked the message anyway. Faked? Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hmm, what's wrong? I've got an idea, Martin. It's probably crazy, but... so is everything else about this case. All right, Watson, let me out. But I don't see what... You're not meant to yet. Just start praying, Martin. This time I've a feeling we're on the right track. You all right, sir? Yes, fine, Watson. I'm going to have a word with Sparks, Martin. A word I should have had with him last night. Weather clear, sea slot. Come in. Ah, oh, hello, Kendall. What can I do for you? About that report you handed to Mr. Cregan last night. <laughs> Bit of a change, that, from these blasted weather reports. You remember what it said? Well, don't you? Anyway, what do you mean last night? I gave that to Mr. Cregan earlier yesterday afternoon. Well, he gave it to me over dinner last night. <laughs> Suppose the old coot forgot it. You know it's Cregan's last voyage. Wouldn't have made this one if the skipper hadn't persuaded him. <laughs> Thought he'd be a piece of cake, passengers instead of cargo. Well, pretty indigestible cake if you ask me. What did the message from Colonel Hacking say? Oh, I've got a copy of it here somewhere. Wait a minute. Well, you always take a copy, do you? Of course I do. Got to cover myself in case there's any kickbacks, haven't I? Anyway, all copies have to be handed into Blake's at the end of the voyage. Hmm. That's funny. It should be here, but it isn't. 
Mr. Sparks, can you remember what it said? Look, what's this all about? I handed the thing to Mr. Cregan. If you got it, why question me? Just tell me what it said. Look, I get hundreds of wireless messages every day. And if I could remember what every one of them said, then I'd have a photographic mind. Yes, but you just said it was a change from weather reports. All right, as it happens, I suppose I can remember it. It was something about a bloke called Slavin. That right? Peter Slavin. I told you I wanted details of his background when you sent my query to Colonel Hackey. Yeah, that's right. Well, as far as I can remember, his reply stated there was no connection with anyone aboard. Are you sure? Well, why should there be? That one by the name of Slavin on this ship. You mean that this was the actual message? You had it all the time. What you ask me for? You're feeling all right, Mr. Kendall. And that was the message you gave to Cregan to give me, huh? Yeah, of course it was. Well, then suppose you answer one question, Sparks. Why is it that this is the one message you don't have a copy of? And why did Mr. Cregan wait until dinner time before handing me a message you say you gave him early yesterday afternoon? I'd had very little to do with a wireless operator on the Tangmar. He was a shifty-eyed fellow in his early twenties and his name was Mal Kay. He sat at his desk watching me as the Morse code started clicking again in this passage of the Tangmar. <laughs> 